Brian John 316. <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We stand here with a Bible, the Word of God, to proclaim to you just the simple fact that Jesus died for your sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The Bible declares that Jesus is God and God is Jesus. He didn't come down here to hang out with the homeboys. He didn't come down here to party. He didn't come out here to check out his creation. He came down here because you have a need. He left his holy heaven. He left his holy throne. He left the greatest of riches that he's ever had to come down this God-forsaken planet of misery and pain and sorrow. He came down because of you. He came down because of me. For the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And since we are sinners, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. We're all going to die. You're not going to escape that fight. You will pay taxes and you will die. You're born to die. The day that you came out of your mother's womb, you will go into a place called heaven. Or you'll go to a place called hell by your death. You will die. And God knew that you would die. And God knew that you were a sinner. And dying in your sins will result of you going to a place called hell. And God stepped down from glory and came down here because the Bible says He's not willing that any should perish. God is long-suffering. Because we're all sinners. And all sinners will die. And all sinners will be put into a devil's hell for all eternity. And God, knowing that, sent His Son, for God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, see, the problem is, you are a sinner. You're going to die. And God had to reach out and do something for you to be saved. If you're to continue your life as you're living right now without God and Jesus Christ, you will be put into a hell that burneth forever. God had to do something for you. That is why there's the story of Jesus Christ being born of a virgin. This is why that there's the story of Jesus being born in Bethlehem. He has not been born for us to celebrate Christmas. He has been born to celebrate His death, burial, and resurrection. If there was only a Christmas for Jesus Christ, you would still die in your sins and go to hell. And yet, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ on Christmas, and yet we don't realize that the wages of sin is death. Who wants to think about that on Christmas? But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The greatest Christmas gift has been provided by God that we may have eternal life. And yet, that's not the ending, that's not the finished work of God. Jesus Christ was born to go to that cross and die for our sins. You are born to die. Christ Jesus, who is God, was born to die. Because you're going to die. I'm going to live forever. Yeah, you're a fool. I'm going to die. You're a sinner, you'll die for the wages of sin is death. For Jesus Christ 
which was born to die upon the cross. I was born to live, not die. Well, when we see you marking it in a cemetery. Where are you going when you die? I'm going to heaven by the Lord Jesus Christ. So you saying I'm not? I didn't say nothing, sir. No, no, no. For Jesus Christ has been born to die upon Calvary's hill, upon the cross, because we are sinners. God saw the need that we needed and met that need by Jesus dying upon that cross. By Jesus giving His blood, which is God's blood, sinless blood. Acts 20:28 20, speaks of that blood being God's blood. That blood, the behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. There's that sin condition. We are born to die. Christ was born that He might die for us. His death was according to the Scriptures. Our death according to the Scriptures. This fool thinks he's going to live forever. If he lived forever, he would defy the Scriptures for the wages of sin is death. The guy's a sinner. I don't believe that guy is Jesus Christ. You will be put into a graveyard. You will be put to your death because you are a sinner. And the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. Before you die, you got to do something with your sin. And there's only one method provided by God. For God said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So what the Bible says, what God says, is Jesus is the only cure for your sin condition. By faith to believe on that Jesus can wash away your sins. See, dying without Christ. If you were to die without Jesus Christ, you will enter into eternity called hell. Because Christ has made a sacrifice for you that you must believe upon, that you must put your faith and trust upon the finished work of Jesus Christ. Religion will get you to hell quick. Atheism agnostics will get you into hell quick. But Jesus Christ is God approved. Jesus Christ is the means of salvation set forth by God. There is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. God is not willing that any should perish. Every extra day that you get, you wake up. And you're without Christ. God's giving you one more day to reach out to His Son. That is the mercy and grace of God. Because if you were to die right now without Christ, you wake up in a hell and you can't get out of there. You can't change after death. Your decision for Christ has to be now. Behold, now is the day of salvation. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, for I have believed on the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. See, God knows that when we die, it's not soul sleep. Death is not the final end. The one that made hell for the devil and his angels, knowing that we're going there, set forth his son that we may have life. And has given you the option. God has given you a free will to choose. Do I want to believe what God says, or do I want to believe in anything else? And God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. 
Mary Allah Baptist credit cards money does not get in the realm of salvation. Salvation is wrought by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone before you die. That's right. Thank you. We're getting a lot of feedback today. It must be the coming full moon. Once you die, that's it. You don't come back. It's not a game. It's done. Your choice has been made when you die. And you stand here, and you're going about your goods, your buying. You say, God, I never realized. God, I never knew. And God will tell you, I sent the loudmouth preacher to tell you about my son. Don't tell me you never knew. See, you people right now here in the gospel are without excuse. You have heard that Jesus saves and Jesus alone saves, so you cannot tell God, I didn't know. By the preaching of the gospel to you guys, trying every Saturday, I leave you without excuse before God the Father. And the only thing I preach on the streets is Jesus saves and that's it. Jesus is coming one day. I will see with my eyes death or rapture Jesus Christ my Savior. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Now last week we had a whole bunch of names over here. You voted for a person that you'll never see in your lifetime, maybe. And if I were to give you a test, give me five names that were over here last week. But I will give you a name that's above all names, given among heaven, whereby we must be saved, Jesus Christ. That's the only name. Matter of fact, these names are so important to mankind that the Bible says those that are saved will get a new name. That's how important your name is. That's how important Obama. That's how important Clinton. That's how important Trump is. If they were to get saved and enter into the glory of God, God will give them a new name. Your name is of no importance. Allah, Muhammad, are not right in the last book of life. They are burning in the devil's hell today. And they're crying out to their Muslims, Believe on Jesus to be saved. There are no virgins. The Koran is a bunch of coloring sticks for children to do in their book. The Koran is a lie. Yet Jesus says, the Bible says, as Muhammad's burden in hell today, Luke says that he wants you to believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. Muhammad's what blood? Jesus shed his blood. I thank the veterans for serving in all the military, but there's one veteran above all veterans that fought an important battle. He fought the battle with death and hell and won and grabbed the keys. The Lord Jesus Christ. And when he went to that cross, he had no comrade in arms. He was there by himself. And in that moment when the sin became upon him, the Father turned out the light and turned his head. He couldn't even face his own son with our sins. The Bible says, for all have sinned. There is none good, no, not one. There's nothing good but Jesus Christ. There's nothing good but God the Father. That's it. We are all capable of lying. We are all capable of stealing. We are all capable of hurting someone at some time in our life. And yet God never can or will or has the ability to lie to us. And God in His infinite mercy and grace reached down to us who are going to hell and says, I have the cure for you. It is in my Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That is the cure for going to hell. 
Now, I cannot tell you the names of cures for VDs. I cannot tell you the name of cures for particular cancers. I can't even begin to pronounce those medical names. But if you want the cure for death and hell, I can tell you the name, Jesus Christ. And no doctor will prescribe that but God. And the, the funny thing about death is, you don't know what's going to happen. You have no idea when you're going to take your last breath. You have no idea that you need to believe on Jesus now because you may not have this afternoon. To have a to-do list is really risky. The fact is that death may be knocking on your door this afternoon and you got to open it. When God says your time is up, paddles, hospitals, paramedics cannot outride what God has righted. If your death is going to be short today, you better believe on the Lord Jesus Christ now, because you can't do it afterwards. Now, maybe mercy and grace that you live 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and the Lord carries. But what if your death is marked today? What if a doctor pronounces today that you have died? And you are woken up in torment in hell upon your death. You cannot come back and say, oh, I believe on Jesus now. It don't work. You've got to believe on Jesus now, while you're breathing, while you're living, while you got a right mind. One little blood clot traveling through your body reaches your brain, and you may never have sense again to believe on Jesus. I wanted to believe on Jesus later, but this blood clot, this stroke, prevented me from losing all sense. We are uncertain of tomorrow, but I am certain right now that Jesus saves. I am certain that if you reject Jesus and you die, you will be in hell. And if you are to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved. And you exit this world, the Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. You close your eyes to death here. And if you're saved, your eyes open up looking to the one that died for you. Now, you can wake up and see the one that loved and died for you. Or you can wake up and find the one that deceived you and live with him burning for all eternity. Well, let me tell you what else the Bible says about you in hell. You're going to want us to go to your family and tell them about that place, because you cannot. In the Gospel of Luke, a man that's in hell, spoken by Jesus Christ himself, says, Will you go to my family and preach the Gospel to them? Go preach the Word. You may not like us preaching on the streets, but people in hell do. The election's over. What about your soul? You can't save Washington, D.C. You can't save America, but Jesus can save your soul by you believing on the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. For God so loved the world, that's all of us. And for God so loved the world, that doesn't include dead people. You don't 
count the dead people unless you're the Democratic Party. Dead people don't count. So when for God so loved the world, that's you that's living, kicking, alive, breathing, heartbeat. For God so loved the world. What did he do? Did he give you a church? No. Did he give you a sword? No. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. What is the gift of life that lasts forever? Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the creator with God the Father. I look around and I see a lot of things that Jesus created and I bet you don't give thanks for him. You know, there's coming a day you will not be able to buy that stuff unless you receive the mark of Satan. You cannot do nothing without the mark of Satan. And if Jesus were to come right now, if he were to call his church right now, you Gentiles would not be able to be saved under the Antichrist. I don't care what movie you watched. Because that time is called the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not for you. In order to buy and sell, you got to receive that mark of Satan. And yet right now, you can call upon Jesus Christ and be saved. And if he were to come, you would be raptured up. You wouldn't have to worry about 666. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ now and not worry about where I go after I die. Now listen, salvation is not going to cure all cures. It's not going to make your life hunky-dory. People will hate you. Walk about and ask the people at these booths, do they love us here? But salvation and the blame of God which take away the sin of the world will solve where you go when you die. It will change your destination from hell to glory by asking Jesus Christ to save your soul and repent of your sins. Did you know that the sin you're cremating right now is when you are complaining about me and the Word? You know the Bible says Jesus takes that personally? You call me any name you want under the sun, but Jesus takes it personally. Because I stand in the shoes of Jesus by the Word of God right here. Preaching the Word, not man. If I was preaching, man, I'd say, give me cash, check, or money order. But that's not God. You see, when they dress you up in a coffin, you're, you are somewhere. It's not all dressed up and nowhere to go. It's where is your soul. The body joins later. Well, I see that body, he's this and that. You don't see the soul, and you don't realize that body will catch up with that soul wherever it went, heaven or hell. Death is not it. Death is not over. Death is why Jesus came. Because it's not over. Your natural state as a sinner that you are, you will go to hell, and you will burn in the lake of fire if you choose to reject Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now we're going to be finishing our message here pretty soon. You're going to have Mr. Bongo Man who claims to be a Christian interview.
interrupting the word being played. Enjoy his music. Because if you reject what? Jesus Christ, you will not have that music in hell. His bongos will burn up. His mouth will be in pain. His attitude will be, I am in dis disregard for God. I don't want to have no joy. I don't want to have no singing. I don't want to have nothing but pain and misery and curse God for all eternity. That's the world. That's the world's music. But right here, right now, is God through the Word. And we don't need dancing, we need preaching. We don't need Trump, we need Jesus. And by the way, I'll let you know, I'm all for Trump. But wait a minute, I'm for the Trump of God calling me out of here. That's the Trump I want. I want the Trump that Jesus Christ comes for his bride called the rapture and calls out all this mess. But until then, I preach the gospel that Jesus died for your sins. According to the scriptures. He was buried and arose again according to the scriptures. Now why did that all happen? Why is that the discussion at Christmas? Why is that the discussion on Easter? What is all that about? Why is there Christmas? Why is there Easter? Because Jesus born to die on that cross and he is resurrected. That's the gospel that you might be saved and not burn in hell. You see, Santa Claus can't save you. Easter Bunny didn't come out of that grave. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the loving begotten Son of God, that take away the sin of our world. There's no cash, check, or money order. It's the blood of Jesus Christ without spot. And if you only knew that there will be a future event that I believe, and I could be wrong, I've been wrong on many things, but I believe that many of you here are going to see my face again. And you will be in great tears. Not because you would have to listen to me again. Because you're going to be in great tears at the great white throne judgment when God proclaims that that guy spoke the truth to you and you went about your business. Can you imagine God telling someone, go to hell? You say it all the day. You, everyone says, go to hell, go to hell. Wait till God tells you to go to hell. We stand here that you may not go to hell by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And God's not going to give you a sign. He's not going to part the waters. He's not going to send the Holy Spirit as a dove. He's not going to heal you. He's not going to do any of that mumble, jungle, carnival stuff. He's going to have the Holy Spirit reach to you by the Word of God right now, this moment, for you to know that Jesus saves, and if you reject Him, you'll go to hell. Don't wait for a feeling. Because God may give you a, a condition, a medical condition, where you'll have no more feeling. Don't trust your man ahead of your church or your synagogue. That man is just as much as a sinner as we are sinners. Another sinner can't do nothing for you. You've got to have sinless blood to be washed. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world? That's 
why Jesus came. That's why there's a man named Jesus. That's what the story of what you call Christmas and Easter is all about. It's not about you getting gifts. God is the gift. It's not about you getting fat with chocolate and Easter eggs and all that. Bunnies don't lay eggs. Gerbils do. Be careful the black jelly beans. You don't know what I mean? Go down to the pet store and get a gerbil. And I've used Christmas and Easter only because that's your language. You know what that is. And by the Bible, Christmas and Easter are pagan and they're lies. No way was Jesus born in December. Nowhere in the Bible is there Santa Claus or, the, or an Easter rabbit. By the way, ladies, if you got Jesus hanging around your neck in an obscene place, and he's still on the cross, that's anti-Bible because he's seated at the right hand of the Father right now. He ain't on that cross no more. Go up to your priest and say, hey, why is he still nailed to that cross on Jelly Bean Sunday and eat all my chocolate on Sunday? He came out of the grave. How'd he get back on the cross? Jesus is no longer on the cross. He is seated at the right hand of the Father right now. Now, you may not be pleased with the gospel. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are pleased with the gospel. I'd rather please God than man. I don't care how you feel. I don't care you don't like it. God likes it. And God said, go ye all the world, for God so loved the world, and preach the gospel to them. You don't have the spirit. Of, you don't know how much I love you to stand out here and scream at you. This America is so dead and penny waste and wasted and drugged and you don't realize what the truth is. You can sign all the petitions you want to God. When he says you go to hell, you go to hell. In the Bible, there are winners and there are losers. I don't care what you feel. I don't care what you think. There are winners and there are losers. Winners are by Jesus Christ. You know what the trouble with America is today? Parents are not honoring God, so their children are doing whatever they want. The churches are not out there with the Word of God. Where are the other churches out here not preaching the Gospel? How many churches are in Daytona Beach, and where are they preaching the Gospel? If you are a pastor here in a church anywhere, and you're not proclaiming the Gospel, I call you a fool. Because the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the Gospel. Look around all the people who are dying and going to hell, Pastor. I go to church. That's the biggest thing that will get you in hell. Mary could save me. Mary said, whatever he says, do it. Jesus said, believe on me and thou shalt be saved. Amen. You don't know what Mary said, did you? Which church? Which church saves? Open up the yellow book. It's not a church. It's a man. The man Christ Jesus. Pilate, the Roman says, said, Behold the man. I find no fault in that man. Three times. That's the one you have to put your faith and trust in. I can't save you. Don't you dare leave this place and say that preacher over there, he's so great, he's so wonderful, and I just, no, it's not me, I'm not great, I'm a sinner too. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Amen. 
If your salvation is not built upon Jesus Christ, you have no salvation. If your sins are not under the blood of Jesus Christ, they're open, they're guilty, and they will cast you into hell. Amen. Your life after death is so important. That's why we have Jesus Christ. God knew your condition, and He met your condition by Jesus Christ. Let me put another illustration. Let's see if you can relate to this one. You sit in front of a, a man's desk, and he has told you that you have a disease. Whatever it is, you pick a disease. I'll let you pick. And he says, I got the cure right here. Here it is. And I'll give it to you for free. Now, that just blew that story, but I'll give you this cure for free. And you sit behind that desk. I don't think it's free. I don't think that's the one. Oh, it's only made by men. It's not going to do it. Oh, then this, you know, white herbs and stuff like that. Well, doesn't that sound foolish? And yet you have the same attitude when it comes to your sin condition about Jesus Christ. I got a church. I got Mary. I got religion. I got fifty dollars. That fifty dollars came from God. How are you going to pay Him back? What's the price of sin? The Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world by the sinless blood, Acts 20:28, 20, God's blood. That is your cure for sin. A pure, undefiled soap, if I could say the word for sin, is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Let me tell you, if you're involved in a religion where you murder, you just created another sin in your life. Think about it, stupid. I'm going to go to heaven by killing people by murdering. That's like opening up a Dunkin' Donuts and Weight Watchers. I'm going to work out and then eat donuts afterwards. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. You're going to die one day. Dying is sure. The wages of sin is death. But the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's it. Salvation is so simple. And you false, according to Proverbs 1, will not come out. I quoted a Bible verse about you guys being fools. Let me quote from there, just in case you don't believe me. I'm going to go to Proverbs 1. I'm going to quote about you guys being fools. Wow, would a preacher do that? Jesus did it, John the Baptist did it, Paul did it, Peter did it. I stand in great shoes. Here we go. Proverbs 1.20 Wisdom cries out, she utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she utters her voice in that street Find 
God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We stand here with a Bible, the Word of God, to proclaim to you just the simple fact that Jesus died for your sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The Bible declares that Jesus is God and God is Jesus. He didn't come down here to hang out with the homeboys. He didn't come down here to party. He didn't come out here to check out His creation. He came down here because you have a need. He left His holy heaven. He left His holy throne. He left the greatest of riches that He's ever had to come down to this God-forsaken planet of misery and pain and sorrow. He came down because of you. He came down because of me. For the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And since we are sinners, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. We're all going to die. You're not going to escape that fight. You will pay taxes and you will die. You're born to die. The day that you came out of your mother's womb, you will go into a place called heaven. Or you'll go to a place called hell by your death. You will die. And God knew that you would die. And God knew that you were a sinner. And dying in your sins will result of you going to a place called hell. And God stepped down from glory and came down here because the Bible says He's not willing that any should perish. God is long-suffering. Because we're all sinners. And all sinners will die. And all sinners will be put into a devil's hell for all eternity. And God, knowing that, sent His Son, for God so loved the world, your Savior. At the great white throne judgment, you cannot tell God I never knew. You will be without excuse. What if the Bible is correct? Let's just, let's suppose for a moment. Let's just suppose that the Bible and God's correct. Are you willing to bet your soul? Are there any gamblers here? People who play cards, horses, whatever. Are there any gamblers here that would put that risk on their soul? Those odds. I don't know what the odds are. I have no idea what odds are. But if God is right, and if the Bible's correct, if you die without Jesus Christ, you will enter a place called hell. Would a gambler take those risks? Well, that's his living. Thanksgiving's coming up. Who are you going to give thanks to? Who gave you all that you have? Well, the farmers gave us... The, the farmers didn't give you breath. The Bible says that your very breath comes from God. Farmers can't give you blood. I see bumper stickers. Farmers, praise farmers. The world needs farmers. The world needs Jesus Christ before it needs farmers. You realize you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and starve to death and, and be in glory? They say man needs air, water, and food to survive. I want to change that. Man needs Jesus, air, water, and food. 
for salvation. It's only in Jesus. And if your salvation does not rest upon Jesus Christ, you have no salvation. And some of you are probably saying, how dare you say that? That's the one that said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. It's not me saying it, it's Jesus. If you only knew how important these words are, and I know you don't because you're not reacting, there's no fear of God. Actually, there's just no fear at all today. I see people step out in front of my car like it was nothing. There's no fear. The conscience has been seared. But as Paul told those Jews, I'm still going to, Lord willing, I'm going to still keep coming out as much as the Lord will allow me. But I've done my job. Now I can't save you. I can't force you to salvation. All I can do is preach the word that God told me to preach. It's up to you now, but if you die in your sins, there's no excuse. What if this was your last day? What if you were to die today? Are you willing to prove the Bible wrong that you can do whatever? When Christ Jesus has done it all for you. You know death is coming. You know why we die? Yeah, if you learn from me, sin. Yes, wages of sin is death. But you know why we die? Do you know what the organization, the beginning of our death was? When God told Adam and Eve not to eat that fruit and they disobeyed God. That's what brought sin and death. They disobeyed God. Now, you're disobeying God now because the Bible says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You are disobeying God, and God will throw you in hell for disobedience. You will live forever, heaven or hell. And if they say to Well, if you do live on more than today, keep in thought that Jesus saves. And thank God, God's giving you another minute to believe on Him. I believe right now that I live another day, another day to be here Saturday morning for you. If God was finished with me in the ministry, I'd be absent from the body and present with the Lord because if He had no need for me no more, I wouldn't be here. God's reaching out to you through, through preaching. He said, Go ye all the world and preach the gospel. Go ye all the world. For God so loved the world that He gets the love of God that God's reaching out to you through a loudmouth. God has given me a loud mouth for you guys to hear. Listen, you think the loud mouth is bad enough on Saturday mornings. Feel sorry for my poor mom that had to live with it for 16 years. My wife has to put up with my loud mouth more than you guys have to. And yet this 
loud mouth is not wicked and proclaims Jesus Christ as your and my Savior. I can shout peanuts and, and hot dogs, that ain't going to do you no good. I can announce people running around on the ball plate. Yeah, he hit the ball. Yeah, he caught the ball. Big deal. Whoopie poop poo. But Jesus saves is important for a mouth. I can proclaim, oh, this person won this state. This person won that state. This person's going here. But this person, Christ Jesus, is the Savior of all mankind. The Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, Thank you for being here. but have everlasting life. You're welcome. I hold the word to life right here. If any of you right now, come on out. I'll turn off the microphone. I'll deal with you one-on-one -on -one with the Bible. Step out. Step out of the world and come to Christ living. Come to Christ as a sinner. Don't come to me with rebukes and this is what I say. I won't talk to you. I won't, I won't battle that battle. I won't play that game. Come to Jesus as a sinner. I'll turn this thing off. I'll open up a Bible and show you the way. If you're a female, we got two females up here that can show you the way of salvation. Today, your name can be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, which would mean when you die, you go to glory. How? By Jesus Christ and His shed blood and repenting that you're the sinner. Salvation and damnation. And if I read my Bible correct, I am saddened that many of you will choose damnation. Many of you will go the way of the broad way. Hopefully, few of you, hopefully some of you will go the way the straight gate. I may never know now. But when we get to eternity, we'll know what you people did. We'll know who you are. You will know the true mood motive of me being out here. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if a man being condemned by God to, to the lake of fire, if they would turn around and thank the preacher that tried to preach to him. I can imagine some of you have to look at me in the face. Thank you for giving me the word even though we didn't believe it. Some of you rather swallow nails and do something like that. And you don't have to. You can come to Jesus Christ right now as a sinner and say, I give it all to you. I don't even know what I'm doing. But Lord, I, I, I'm a sinner. That guy's preaching. I'm a sinner. And if he's correct and your word's correct, I, I don't want to go to hell. I do not want to go to hell. And I'm too chicken to stand out. But I don't want to go to hell. Step out. I'm not going to have you say a prayer. I'm going to have you step out, walk up to this Bible as I show you the Bible. Step out to Christ.
Christ now. Stop denying Jesus. The Bible says you deny Jesus, He'll deny you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's why Jesus. That's what Jesus. That's who Jesus. That's why Jesus. That's when Jesus. That's a who, what, where, why, and when of Jesus. And it was nothing about himself. It was that he can meet the creation, men and women, to God the Father, the mediator, by the cross, according to scriptures, being buried, and arose again the third day, according to scriptures, and seated at the right hand of the Father. That's the who, what, where, when, and why of Jesus. The thing I'd like you guys to know about Jesus since Christmas is coming up. I don't want you to think it's buying stuff and credit card. I wouldn't want you to think that. I won't mention Thanksgiving because there's no thanks to God. Uh, we're going to be thankful to MasterCard, Visa, and everything else Thursday night into Friday morning. Well, that's the gospel. I've done my part. It's up to you now. It's up to you to reach out to God as a sinner. It's up to you to realize that God will cast you into hell. That loving God is a holy God. There's only one means to the Father, that's Jesus Christ. 